Good morning everyone from a beautiful day here in Iceland. I'm in Reykjavik, its capital. Let's go and explore this beautiful city. Just walking towards the center. But yes guys, so before we explore this beautiful city, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, please hit the like button on this video. And I've got a quiz question for you to start off this vlog. Which of the following do you think was banned in Iceland during 1915 and 1989? Was it A, beer, B, dogs, or C, corrugated iron? If you watch to the end of the video, you will know the answer. And here in front, guys, we can see our first cat. Now, I've been told, and I've read up, that Iceland, and Reykjavik in particular, have got lots of cats. In fact, there are about 20,000 cats in the city. That is approximately one cat for every 10 inhabitants of a wider Reykjavik area. Very interesting. The city of cats. So I just want to use this opportunity to apologize in advance to all my Icelandic viewers because I am going to mispronounce quite a few names and words. But we've arrived here at the iconic Hallgramskirkja. The Hallgramskirkja here in Reykjavik. 74.5 meters tall, very distinct curved spire and wings on the side as you can see. It actually took 41 years for this church to be built from 1945 to 1986 and it's seen as an important cultural symbol of Reykjavik. And right here, in front of Holgramskirke, you can see a statue of Leif Eriksson. And there's a hotel named after him the back here as well. You can see the Hotel Leif Eriksson. Icelandic sagas, of course, Leif Eriksson over here. And not Christopher Columbus, was the first European to set foot on North American soil. Almost 500 years or half a millennia before Christopher Columbus did. All of you have heard of Christopher Columbus, but I bet not many of you have heard of Leif Erikson, and that is him there. It's going to be my attempt at pronouncing the street Skola Vordugista. I don't think that's how you pronounce it, but anyway, let's go. So here behind me, we got a bit better view of the Hallgrimskirke. Icelandic supermarket here. I want to show you something about the architecture here in Reykjavik. You got the one painted house here, the yellow one and then the blue one next to it. And I'm sure you will notice something peculiar about it. So you can see, let's look at the blue one. 
you can see it's got timber frames and then we've got corrugated metal corrugated iron also on this one you can see here yeah, that's wood and that is corrugated iron and the same here on this side you can see different colored houses timber frames or windows and then the corrugated iron timber or wood is very scarce in Iceland traditionally there were very few forests and very few trees and when people built houses it was only up until the sort of mid 19th century that people started using wood to build houses and it was primarily the elites that imported wood kits from places like Scandinavia the picture kind of changed in the 1880s when Iceland started trading with the United Kingdom Iceland would export sheep and they would import corrugated iron people soon started to realize that corrugated iron is an excellent addition to their houses to protect them against bad weather and in fact in 1915 there was a fire in Reykjavik and a lot of buildings was destroyed except the ones that were covered with corrugated iron protected with corrugated iron so there was a law that came into place until the mid 1920s that all houses that were built sort of side by side needed corrugated iron. There you go, the history of corrugated iron in Iceland. Many of the houses still today are covered in corrugated iron. Here you can see some more houses clouded in the corrugated iron I just talked about. And they all painted different colours, which gives quite a quirky edge to the Reykjavik architectural scene. So you can see that house, it's got a number there, 1927. Presumably that's the year it was built. And by that time, it was no longer a legal requirement to have a corrugated iron. I think that's why some of these will not have a corrugated iron because they are much newer. Some interesting graffiti. sort of snake-like pattern on the uh, pavement here. In general, Reykjavik, a very, very colorful place. It's actually my third time in Reykjavik. I've been here in 2009 on my first visit, and then again in 2013. And it's just lovely to walk around here, especially on an early morning, where there's not a lot of people out and about just yet. You can really feel the quirkiness and the eccentric feel of a city in a way with the bells of the Hallgramskirke in the background Here you can see more colorful buildings on the side there as well some graffiti a really lovely place to walk around and to explore right here's another attempt at pronouncing Klapparstigur street over there here yeah, you can buy some authentic Icelandic sweaters. I think that's what you call the Lopa Pesa. Maybe uh, if someone knows, they could confirm that in the comments. But the Lopa Pesa is an important part of Icelandic culture as well. It's a sort of national sweater, the national jumper. Here yeah, you've got a health shop a vegan organic health shop beautiful day Here you can see the harbor in the foreground Some more buildings in the corrugated iron that I mentioned. So, so obviously, maybe that gives you a clue for your quiz question that I asked earlier. Maybe that is an option you could eliminate in terms of what was banned in Reykjavik between 1915 and 1989.
Another shot. Yeah. Here's a very colourful street name, Tirigata. Sorry for the pronunciation. Here you've got, is it Einstein and Tupac Shakur enjoying a drink? Very good. Very colourful building there as well. Drag parties and dance parties. pedestrian zone. You play your own game of hopscotch. Even numbers. Puffin. Puffin shop. So here's another interesting fact about Reykjavik. Doesn't have a Starbucks or a McDonald's. In fact, only Tirana. When I was in Tirana in Albania, I noticed there were no McDonald's there as well. And Rome, until recently, was the other European capital that didn't have a Starbucks. But I believe I have a Starbucks now. And maybe let me know if that is, if that is the case. got to the end of the hopscotch and in this street you could have a running competition against your mates one two three four start or you could just walk around There's another colourful street. Families out enjoying the sunshine and the uh, rainbow coloured street. Front there, you can see the Holgrams Kirke again. And looking back to the city there. 
What a beautiful place, one of my favorite cities in the world. I know a lot of people come to Iceland for different reasons, to explore, say the Golden Circle tour, to go on a volcanic tour or see the Northern Lights, but Reykjavik itself, I also think is worth a visit. I've always had a fascination with Iceland and Reykjavik in particular for whatever reason. I guess part of it was when I was growing up in South Africa and I looked at a map of the world, Iceland just seemed so isolated, so on one side, so difficult to get to. It almost looked like the end of the world. And so for me to be here a third time and actually see the city again and see that not much have actually changed. Yes, some of the streets look different in terms of how they've designed it and some of the things they've added, but the buildings and the shops are still pretty much the same. And there's a bit of comfort in that as well. One of the reasons why I started doing these vlogs is that I realized looking at pictures, it's not the same. I don't know if you, some of you might look on Facebook and you get these memories of a photo that you've taken, say, eight years ago, seven years ago. And you often don't recognize the picture. It tells a story in a particular place or particular point in time. But the video just adds so much more, don't you think? And also, yes, it's my third time here. I love going back to places that I visited before. It's almost like watching a movie for a second or a third time. Your favorite movie, because you realize or you recognize new things in the movie that you didn't see the first time. And or you, or you have the opportunity to focus more on the things that you liked and enjoyed. So when I came to Reykjavik in 2009 and 2013, Prikit, a little coffee shop over here was my go-to place for a, a coffee. They had bottomless coffee at the time and I hope they still have now. So I'm in need of one. Yeah, it still looks exactly the same. Some more interesting facts about Iceland is that there were no TV on July's until 1983 and no TV on Thursdays until 1987 for whatever reason. Tourist information over there and here you got some extension to the government offices so the building over here I believe is the cabinet of Iceland and the prime minister's office in Reykjavik some of the things you can do when you're in Reykjavik, you can go whale watching, of course, a very popular activity. You can do a city walk next to the House of Parliament. And then some of you might be interested in this. The Icelandic Penis Museum, which I'm not interested in, but the it's very clear that it's the only one of its kind in the world. So if you're in town and something that interests you, come to Reykjavik. Come see the Penis Museum. There's quite a few people here standing, they're probably part of a tour. 
I believe this is the Parliament of Iceland. Parliament of Iceland. <laughs> Ooh, and uh, I see something that's been dug up as a part of a demonstration over there. Welcome refugee to Iceland. The port is unhuman. There's a cross over Greece. Maybe in some protest. Looks like some people have started digging up Parliament. And yes, some more of the architecture here as well. Is a is a new building for the Icelandic Parliament coming, so to speak. Some of the construction. I'm just walking right next to the existing Parliament building. No security. Absolutely, you can just anyone can just come and walk by. So pretty relaxed about the Parliament here in Iceland. And the same with the Prime Minister's residence, actually, or Prime Minister's office, we saw earlier. Beautiful flowers. Certainly one of my favourite things to do in Reykjavik is to come here to the big pond in Reykjavik called Chotnen, which is here. And you can see lots of birds on the water. And because of all the birds on the water here yeah, and because a lot of people constantly feed the birds with bread this has got the nickname as the biggest bread soup in the world right here in Reykjavik so the biggest penis museum and the biggest bread soup in the world two facts about Reykjavik I believe that is the city hall Lots of LGBT plus flags as well in the city. You would have seen the Rainbow Street as well. Reykjavik and Iceland, known to be a very inclusive place, very tolerant place. This is something you don't see every day. Check out this monument here. A giant stone slab covering the top part of a person carrying a briefcase this is the monument to the unknown bureaucrat. Many cities around the world have got a monument dedicated to the unknown soldier who perished in battle. Not here in Reykjavik. Here you've got a monument dedicated to the faceless, thankless job that the bureaucrat do every day. In this case, serving the people of Reykjavik. It's a bit of satire together with art, perhaps. But what a fantastic monument. You can see people feeding the birds and the biggest bread soup in the world. Some of the birds you can find here on Chotnan Pond. And this is on the southern side of Chotnan, looking towards Central Reykjavik. Small little island there inside the lake. Right, so I've just arrived here at a park which I cannot pronounce but there's some information here that says it was Reykjavik's first formally planned path and it's at the southern end of the Chotnan Lake. Absolutely beautiful here. People relaxing and just enjoying the sun.
just passing the National Gallery of Iceland here. And this is a particularly interesting monument. Let's see if we can figure out what this is. Looks like a Viking, potentially. And it looks pretty old. Beautiful parks here all across Reykjavik as well. Trees, flora, plants, flowers. Check this out, how genius is this for a takeaway food place? Grill of Thrones. Grill of Thrones. Hard Rock Cafe in Reykjavik. They may not have a McDonald's or a Starbucks, but they do have something of American culture. There's a dog. And here's a big reveal. So dogs were banned in Reykjavik from 1924 to 1984. So why no dogs in the city between 1924 and 1984? Well, in those days it was felt that a city was no place for a dog. Because Iceland was still a very rural society and the dog was very much seen as an animal that belongs in a countryside. That's why earlier when I said there's lots of cats in Reykjavik, it's because when the dog's away, the cats rule the city. So the answer to our quest question earlier, what was banned between 1915 and 1989 here in Reykjavik? The answer, of course, is beer. Not corrugated iron, which we talked about, and not dogs, which was also banned, or which were also banned, but in a different period. Beer and alcohol traditionally very expensive here in Iceland, which is why a lot of people, even till today, even though it's a little bit cheaper today after the financial crisis, but people, the culture here is very much you drink at home until midnight and then you go out for a beer. Street map, free copy. That is very, very good. So, just got myself a pizza slice. In Arizona sparkling ice lemon tea for 1189 Icelandic krona. Mm, very nice. Pizza is very nice as well. Having a break and doing some uh, some people watching here. Landsbanken, major bank here in Iceland. Doing a bit more walking here. There's an English pub. If you're a Briton, you miss home. You can go there. The Laundromat Cafe. Yeah, I've been here in 2013, I think. I had a coffee here, very nice place. Jungle bar. American bar. No Starbucks or McDonald's, but American bar and a hard rock cafe. Irish pub as well. Pizza we crust.
I stand corrected, but I think this is the older part of Reykjavik. And with the harbour and all the harbour behind some of the buildings here. question that this post poses here was, was James Bond Icelandic? Yeah, oh, don't know about that. Maybe they've got a point with Leif Eriksson as the first person to set foot on American or North American soil, rather. Icelandic James Bond, not sure about that. Just walking towards the harbour where we will be exploring some more. Some very unpronounceable words over here, but we've made it to Reykjavik Harbour. Reykjavik fish and chips over there. Welcome to Reykjavik Old Harbour. So yeah, if you fancy going to see some whale watching, this is where you would come. Wildlife adventures. Beautiful area to explore. Giant puffin. If you want to go and see the puffins, this is a place to come. Whale watching, northern lights. Here's a monument to the seafaring community of uh, Reykjavik in Iceland. Looking seawards. With respect and gratitude to the Icelandic seafaring community, they bring wealth for the nation, food for the child, lay the solid foundation where the future is built. There are no public railways in Iceland, but there were some locomotives that were used to help build the port and they are on display here locomotive yes two steam locomotives pulled the wagons loaded with rock and gravel at the start of the harbour area construction in 1913 of people about enjoying the sunshine. Beautiful day here in Reykjavik. Could not have wished for a better day to be honest. Reykjavik also has a sightseeing bus like you'll find in many cities across the world now. And we've arrived here at Harpa which is the music hall here in Reykjavik. Very interesting design. You can see some purple and blue stained glasses there, or maybe that's just the reflection of the sun. I'm not sure, but quite an interesting design. Yeah, lots of interesting buildings and statues as well here in Reykjavik. In terms of statues, nowhere near as prominent as in Skopje, or as abundant as in Skopje, but still very, very interesting. And yes, this one. Yep, signifying we are now in music territory, Harpa. Let's walk a bit more down the harbour front here and see if we can see the Sun Voyager sculpture, which is an interesting sculpture. And then obviously just look at all the surroundings here, absolutely stunning. Oh, very interesting. the stones packed on each other yeah if someone knows what all these stacked piles of stones signify let us know in the comments oh, no. yeah. 
absolutely brilliant just walking here. We're right next to the traffic. You can actually smell fresh ocean air. There's Hallgrim's Kirke. And there's the Sun Voyager monument, which we're just gonna walk to now. You can see more free street maps if you want to. I really do like this initiative. I hope more cities around the world would do it. But we have arrived at the Sun Voyager monument. And as you can see, it's a popular photo opportunity for many people. It's mistakenly thought to be a Viking ship, but it's not. It's actually called the Sun Voyager Monument and it's an ode to the sun. So the artist wanted to portray the promise of undiscovered land and the art of the possible in terms of a big world. Very interesting little sheds here. This part of town. More wooden buildings with the corrugated iron. This is actually quite a nice design, I think. Vita Stigur. I hope my Icelandic is getting better. taking a quick break here at the hostel guys just want to show you where I'm staying so this is a 10 bedded dormitory uh, there's my locker with my stuff this is my bed where I'm staying over there I got a plug over there that's not working so I had to go to the kitchen charge my GoPro batteries literally and here are the curtains last night I had trouble sleeping because I arrived at midnight and it was still light here in Iceland and it remained light for until like one or two in the morning or glimpses of light at least but yeah what did i pay for this for two nights 52 pounds iceland is not your cheap budget destination so keep that in mind when you travel to this part of the world whereas 52 pounds in albania will get you a nice single room or a double room with a balcony if you're lucky whereas in iceland you'll be part of a dormitory and others sleeping around you. Right, we've arrived here at a sculpture garden and museum. Let's go and check it out. Let's go explore. Wow, very, uh, some very interesting sculptures here for sure. Looks of it. Oh, to the lost airline. Right, so not a lot of information about these works of art apart from a, seemingly the title Birth of Psyche Sparks With a Christmas light at the back there You can see the spire of the Holgrim's Kirke in the background there. Grief. And a very nice park to come and hang out and sit down and enjoy the sun. And some more sculptures over here. 
wrestlers. Yeah, actually, uh, this is an area that I've not visited in my previous two visits, so something new. Something new for me at least. Maybe this park has been around for quite a while. Wow, well, guys, I didn't think I'd stumble across this in the city. But look at that. It's actually an Icelandic house with a turf roof. Yeah, there you can see the turf from another angle of the grass. So obviously this is what most Icelanders would have used as part of their houses until the uh, 19th century. I'm starting to think, is Reykjavik perhaps the real city of statues? And we are back on Laugavigur, the main shopping street here in Reykjavik. Let's explore a bit more. Very interesting building this as well. this for another catchy name you've got lots of volcanoes obviously in Iceland and if you want some gifts you can come to the Volcano gift shop through the window here yeah, some magnets Icelandic wool at the Volcano I swear Vietnam market is an Arabian taste so Reykjavik, very cosmopolitan city as well. And here's another view of this beautifully rainbow-lined street here in Reykjavik leading up to the Hallgrimskirkja. And I think that's a good way to end this vlog on a bit of a colorful note and I hope you enjoyed this video hopefully it gave you an idea of what Reykjavik looks like what people do here what the buildings look like thanks again for watching my videos guys and I'll see you again soon